championship. He beat Ray Phoenix to get Ernest Curran winner. ACH has done just about everything. And ACH said everybody's going to interpret that phrase for the culture differently. But to ACH, this is his culture. Independent wrestling. AAW. These people. The AAW family. This is what truly inspires ACH to be that living, walking, breathing superhero that he loves to be. ACH thrives off that energy and the passion of these people. And ACH, not interested in contract, not interested in corporate wrestling. ACH is looking to get back to what made him fall in love with pro wrestling. There's a lot to be said for the so happy. ACH is happy for this ring and for these fans. And you know what? Some may not agree with the way he did it, but he ultimately was able to find a way to make himself happy again. I've got to give him credit for that. Really high. looking to uh, pop that balloon of happiness that he seems to finally be able to get his blast We've got a couple of divergent personalities here because ACH uh, looking to find that happiness and that momentum again. And Fred Yehi is proud to say he's angry and pissed off. Does Fred Yehi have a gripe based on maybe being over? maybe being underappreciated, maybe being cast off to the side in uh, favor of athletes more like ACA. I've got to address just one thing about Fred Yeha. Whatever the hell that is on his left leg, it really freaks me out. That mouth thing. It's like a knee pad, but it's like a, almost like a garbage pail kid face. I don't know what it is. I've seen him wear that before, but it makes me uncomfortable. Maybe, just maybe. Yeah, Yeha picks the arm. ACH to go behind now, amateur style takedown. ACH able to reverse things. ACH is uh, another of those athletes who, uh, he's not the tallest in AAW, but he's got some deceptive power. He's very well put together. And he winds up on top of the situation. I've always been a firm believer in pro wrestling for all shapes, all sizes. You cannot take anybody and look at their size, their height, or anything tangibly noticeable about them physically and know what they are capable of in the ring. There are a whole lot of wrestlers that we could apply to cliches. Where we could apply the cliche of, ouch, that hurt like a son of a bitch. And here's an interesting fact about Fred Yehi. Let's keep in mind that throughout his travels, throughout his time here at AAW and, and elsewhere, Fred Yehi has defeated AEW champion Max Miller. Could that be a goal on his mind in 2020? Of course, we're speculating that's a big leap from just here in January of Fred Yehi trying to reestablish himself. But I think Fred Yehi looks at the fact he's beaten Mance Warner in his career and realizes, I can beat that again. And if I do it in this building, I'll be the man. Standoff of sorts here, and now lights him off ACH. Take over again. Kevin, ACH has been more successful in AAW than probably anywhere else in his career. Uh, when you look at certainly championship resume and, and certainly uh, how these fans have taken him, how beloved he is, is there anything you credit that to? Is it just, is it just uh, magic in a bottle, so to speak? Is it, has it been the heart that he's been able to, to, to give to these fans and then feed off them in return? What, what do you measure ACH's success in here in AAW? I think it really comes down to one thing for ACH is it comes down to so many wrestlers. The right time and the right place to be you. We see people try a lot of things with us. They have, uh, I don't want to be too inside baseball, but they may try different gimmicks, brother, and that's the last thing I'll say about that. Where maybe they try different personas, different looks, different mind game tactics. Publicity stunts, yeah. And not, not everything sticks. And here, ACH isn't reliant on anybody else to market him. He's not reliant on anybody else to come up with a design for his gear or for his website or for his Twitter graphics or whatever it may be. This is a place where ACH can be wonderfully Many, many years ago at this point. 
and now he's looking for that opportunity again to show why ACH is among the best in AAW, the world pro wrestling over in Yehai. Not wanting to, to be the person who uh, proves that at his own expense. And it's so difficult, and ACH did so many unprecedented things in, in AAW that he was not able to accomplish anywhere else. He's basically, I mean, in some ways, Kevin, he's starting from the ground up. He, he did not have a great 2019 in pro wrestling. That's, that is certainly uh, not a secret. He, he, he lost a lot of momentum. He lost a lot of ring time. Back here, ACH is looking to, to build that from scratch, and he's got a hell of a test with Yehai to try to start that in singles competition. He just ate a hell of a boot from Yehai there on the ground as well. Said Metalwood actually down on the ground to check. Here we, we may see a little bit more of that referee's discretion here. And Yehai has said ACH doesn't represent him, doesn't represent his cult, his belief. Fred Yehai is for Fred Yehai. down if the only person you trust is yourself. Though not impossible, it can still happen. That's very true. I've often said few people can ever piss me off like I can. Right now he's able to basically mount ACH like he's harnessed to beat him on the ground. And Yehi may be looking at Coming back in. Smokes it with that ball. Check out both athletes jumping in position here. Look at the one up the other. A treacherous part of the ring, and ACH hits the guardrail. It's a bad time to be the kneecaps of the football of AEW. Those rails are not the most secure. And really, if those fans put their feet up and try to block the rail coming to them, that really hurts ACH more because that's less hit they have. Hard to imagine any scenarios where a rail doesn't hurt, but this does in fact. Yeah. It's so much worse for the competitors. Yehi, a very from a neck bite here. Is that neck crimp? And now looks to be, is he in the eye? It's, it's, it's tearing at the bridge of the nose. Hard to tell from our vantage point here in the... What is it? Is it the, the, the bout, we'll just call it the bout. He's going to drop the hurt. And he goes nice. But that's very cool. is uh, keeping his vertical base any opportunity he can, not putting himself in a defensive position. Sunset look coming up. Counter. Stomping on the hand. Other hand as well. And so much offense. Striking, gripping, lifting. They all have the commonality of needing the human hands to make it happen in the midst of a world of surprise. And if ACH isn't able to get grip, that takes away a lot of options. That takes away oh, very, very sound strategy. Now you can see an attack upon both hands by a target, by a professional wrestler. So credit to Yehi for really starting to break the hands down. And I'll credit to ACH for getting a rapid kick down. And he's in the ears now, is Yehi? Double hand for the ear. from Yehi, and I think a lot of this is just Yehi uh, venting out his aggression more so than a sound competitive strategy. I think we're seeing the angry side of Yehi come through looking to make an example out of ACH to play spoiler to ACH's homecoming. By so much back, the rib cage and immediately went to the Using those, I mean, you can take a look at the conditioning of Yehi. I assume those legs are pretty damn strong, and hopefully, he can use that leg strength. He's going to need it to push the body of ACH away to get the full extension out of the side. If he does, this one's it's formula. Yeah, the cross arm break for attempt, and uh, counter number one was clasping his hands together to prevent the full extension. Counter two, foot of the ropes, and uh, referee is able to enforce that rope break. Yehi has been doing this eight long years. And I, I've heard his name, I've seen him have success, but certainly Yehi's name has not gone as far up the ladder as ACH has had. 
and he's looking to change that. And he's looking to do it in, in the house that, that helped make ACH what he is. And Yehi, much like a Jordan Oliver, much like a Lander. I mean, he's looking to make 2020 his year. This is the night anything can happen. We're coming off the Windy City Classic. Guys are looking to reestablish themselves, establish themselves for the first time. And make up the past long the prior year. It's not necessarily a clean slate, but it could be, as the name suggests, a new bounce in these applicants. And a victory here, not just in AEW, but in Louisville, PCH. What that does to he is being very strategic. Yehai came prepared. 
Both of these men have pulled out some of their aces, but there are a lot of other cards in the deck. We've seen a lot of those other cards played in this match. What card do they still have up their sleeve? What can either of these men pull off in this matchup? Because we've seen them just fire every net, well, not everything they have, but certainly a significant portion of their arsenal. We'd be here all night if we'd like to see every I mean, These are two just absolute uh, dedicated, calculated fighters through and through. And testament, Kevin, to the stalemate. This match has been the even keel of this competition. Both men struggling to their feet at the same time. Both competitors trying to stay in contact now. It's, it's not a feeling out process. It's simply just trying to, to get a feel for where your opponent is and to try to land the, the proverbial death blows put in this match. What's it going to take to put this one? Evolving to straight punching each other in the face. 